So we're gonna analyze why Kuo Jin Chun is the best technical weightlifter of all time. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dan Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning more about Olympic weightlifting, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna have better movement, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you hit those PRs. So I was fortunate enough in 2019 to sit right by Quo's platform as she was training, as she was preparing to win the world championships. And one of the interesting things about that session is how focused she is during her training, how much she visualizes during her training, how she interacts with her teammates, how she interacts with her coaches after, after she might have a little bit of an error in her movement. And the biggest thing I noticed is that every single thing that she does has a purpose and she executes every single exercise perfectly. She has a governor in her brain that tells her exactly how to do every single movement and she needs to do it in that very specific way over and over and over and over again. So I'm excited to start with this. This is when she's very, very young. She's, we're starting right off the bat in the 2012 Olympics and here she is, she's opening to recognize that valgus knees doesn't necessarily mean you should stop pushing the load. It's something that you definitely need to take care of, but it shouldn't inhibit a load or a weight from increasing in a specific lift as long as you're still addressing that in, in the movements. There she is opening up at 97 kilos. This, is, this competition here, it's interesting to note because I, I, when I study Quo, I like to take notes of her jumps and what her, her attempts are. I like to see what her attempt, uh, what those jumps are and her consistency when she takes a three kilo jump versus a four or five kilo jump. And in this comp, her coach has her taking those three kilo jumps every single time there. Chest comes back just a little bit when the bar's into the hip. So it was a little behind and she does it a little bit more, even, even a little more so here on this 103. I've watched these videos probably thousands of times um, because of her technique is so, so good. But one of the big factors of why she can save this lift, even with it being behind, you can see she has to sit back really, really deep. She makes that technical adjustment. But the reason is because when the bar is in the hip, she's her chest gets behind and her heels are popping just a little bit earlier than they typically would when she's more precise with her movement. Now, clean and jerk. This is uh, this series of clean and jerks is, is another interesting uh, position for where what her attempts tend to be. And this is when she's starting to clean up her movement. She's starting to get a little bit wider in the split. A little forward on that. But so she opens at 128. Okay, so she, she jumps to 31. So that's a three kilo, uh, three kilo jump. And again, this is stuff I, I love watching with her coach is why does he do certain things? And obviously there's some reasons if she's got to win the competition, right? She's going to make a bigger jump at some point. Actually, you can see that valgus knee there. Again, it's not preventing her from hitting these monster lifts, 131. Maybe a little narrow in that split, but she still comes out with it nice and clean. Now she jumps to 35, okay? So, so far she's made five lifts. She's five for five currently. Comes in at 135. It's a huge lift. And she might even be coming off of, she had a serious injury to her femur. I wanna say 2014. Just a little forward. Just a little forward, still runs it down, saves the lift, she's good to go. All right, so here she is, and you can see the 103 over here on the right. Compare the 103, if you can, to her opener. Watch as the bar's tight. She's got vertical shins right there, bar, the knees clear back. Now the knees start to come under. Now she starts to pop on that right heel a little early. She gets the chest back just a little more than on her opener, okay? And then what ends up happening is because she's on the toes early, her feet take a little bit longer to ground. And then the bar is slightly out of position. But because of her stability overhead and because of her mobility in her shoulders, she's able to save the lift. Okay, now we can see with this clean and jerk, 
Look at the same principles. It's the same principles. The knees clear back. She gets a vertical shin angle. Knees come through. She's staying flat footed. She sits through, has a nice tall vertical finish. Feet slide out to that catch position. And when they ground, they ground flat footed. They don't ground toe to heel. They ground flat footed. That, look at that mobility in her ankle. Nice dorsiflexion there. Just a great lift. Slight valgus and that's not a problem. Somebody should be, is gonna comment down below. Oh my God, her knees are valgus. That's gonna prevent her from winning a world title. Pops a little bit on that right heel, just a hair. And that's, that's another consistent movement that she has an issue with, um, is that when it gets really, really heavy, her right heel typically will pop just a hair and she, and what ends up happening is her, her hips sort of roll forward a hair and that heel pops and her right foot doesn't move as much forward, doesn't move as forward as much as it does when she's very, very clean and that leaves the bar forward on and that's what happened on that heavy lift. But that's a consistent theme with her throughout all of her career. She, she, her, she does that frequently with really, really heavy jerks. Does that mean her technique's not good? No, it means her technique is the best and when there's just a slight consistent error, we sort of know exactly how she's going to be missing that. This is the 2017 World Championships in Anaheim. This is 105, a little forward there. Just a little bit forward, but still, she's able to save that lift. This is one of the better clean and jerks of her career. I think it's a hair forward, but that clean was so nice. She dips a little round in that upper back, but still front foot moved forward really well, smacks it. Again, technical consistency, I think is something that you can see from the moment somebody grabs the bar all the way up to that top end lift. And if you can see, you know, just a little error at that top end lift, that's okay because she has everything established early on in her warmups. And that's the one thing with this video from All Things Gym, this is great, you know, great footage from All Things Gym, is you can see how precise and how deliberate she is with her warmups. You can see the position she's hitting consistently with the bar, with 35 kilos, with 40 kilos, with 45 kilos. Every single attempt that she does in warmups is all about setting up her, her and imprinting her nervous system to move the way she wants it to move when she's at that top end. And you're gonna even see here, she does, a, she does a drill here once she's got 35 on the bar. And you can see that high hang. What are her knees doing? Her knees are forward from the high hang. Her knees are forward, okay? But her heels are flat footed, okay? And that's a key concept to get the bar around the knee. The knees track forward after the bar clears the knees. Now that we call, I call this the chun snatch. Okay, so I, I, I use this quite a bit. This is an excellent movement to hold that plantar flexion. And what it does is it teaches the lifter to stay over the bar as long as possible. And if, if she would get her chest back too much, she wouldn't be able to hold that plantar flexion. She'd have to put her heels down immediately. But what's she doing right now? She's visualizing, she's warming up those ankles. She's trying to get into a good position. This is somebody who's snatched recently, almost snatched 110 kilos. She's Still taking those warm-ups at 35, 30, or at 35, at 40. A lot of novice lifters just want to throw weight on the bar without actually imprinting the proper movement. And this is, she's the best technical lifter, I believe, ever, ever, okay? Anybody can use her as a technical model, anyone, male, female. And if you, and if you see the way she approaches her warm-ups, that's what you've got to do if you want to be the absolute best in the world. Still doing a chun snatch there. Basically a muscle snatch with plantar flexion. Good, strong upper body. Now she's moving well, really, really snappy. That was nice, 55. Okay, so now she's at 80 kilos. Look at that. That's like... And, and, and so she's you know, a little bit lower than 80%. So that's where you're typically gonna see her best movement. If you watch the best lifters in the world, I think you've got to establish like 78 to 85% is typically going to be where you see their 
perfect movement, okay? And that's where I think a lot of people miss out is they're not studying what she does between 75 and 90 kilos. And that's where I think a lot of, a lot of people should be paying attention to these lifts. You know, that 90 kilo snatch right there is probably one of the absolute best snatches that you could ever possibly watch. And if you watch that a thousand times, you're gonna see exactly what she's doing from the floor to the knee, around the knee, from the knee to the catch, or from the knee to the hip, from the hip to the catch. And then how does she conduct herself? She, she sits down, she's only worried about what she can impact. She's only worried about staying focused. She's not worried about loading. She's not worried about the board. She's not worried about anything. She's taking her warmups when she needs to take it. She just hits 98 kilos, completely smashes it. She's got a, she, you know, coaches come over, hey, there's a little bit of a backup at the, at the platform. We're gonna have to take this again. Okay, it doesn't matter. She's got so much training volume. She has such consistent movement. It doesn't matter. She's the Tom Brady of, of Olympic weightlifting, right? So now we're getting into her, her clean and jerks for that warm up session. And again, what's she doing? She's warming everything up with the bar. She's taking precise care of her movement because she's ingraining that effective optimal patterning that she needs when she gets really, really heavy. Okay, so now she's taking five, you know, and that's, that's, this is right where we were talking about with her 80 to 90 K snatches. And that's where we're gonna see the best movement of her lifts is down around that 80, 85% range. You got 15 on, same thing. Tight dip, front foot goes forward, boom. Now she's really starting to loosen that up. She looks, that's so good there. I also think too, it's important that a lot of coaches in competition tend to just talk and talk and talk with their athletes. And what ends up happening, I think, is that the athletes get distracted. If you know, no one's really even talking to her. No one's really saying things to her. Like, they might come over, hey, just so you know, we're gonna do this. Hey, just so you know, this is what's going on but no one's sitting there giving her 9 million cues. They, they probably had a meeting beforehand and they established what is the goal, what's our technical movement gonna be that we have to really, really hammer, and then how are we gonna progress through warmups so that you can hit those monster lifts. Really good jerk there, geez. Okay, this is filmed by yours truly, and I think that, uh, I love the fact that I sat, you know, right by her platform, videoed this entire session and was just able to see how she communicates that even the jumps that she does in training and, and writing all those little details down to study, hey, how many reps is she taking at every single attempt, every single weight, all these things. And here she goes, just absolutely destroys this. Solid as a rock in the catch. Tight dip, perfect front foot recovery. Excellent mobility, and so what this does is it, it that's you know that was a couple days out from from this competition. She comes out, she misses 106. She has to hit this 106 to stay in the comp. And if we think about it, to be consistent and to have that confidence, you can have an error, and the great athletes will have an error, and they are still so confident that they come back and they make a lift that they have to make to stay in the comp to stay at least close to her opponent from North Korea. And that's the big thing there, is that that 106 kept her in the game, okay? Um, I think Cho ends up taking like 108, maybe 109. Um, her opponent, but there, she's a little bit out of position, still is able to correct it, comes out, that big make. It's a little bit behind the bar, toes pop, or heels pop a little early compared, you know, relative to normal, to her normal. Okay, so she comes out now. She's hit 137. She's gotta hit 140 to win this. She has to hit 140 to win this. This is huge. This is a huge lift, huge pressure lift. She comes out. We've got to think about what has she done throughout her career. She's established technical patterns. She's focused on every single optimal movement. She smacks the hell out of that clean. Right, 
recovers, has to walk forward a little because the, the bar is just slightly forward on her. She When she dips, she, she rolls the hips under her just a little bit. Comes from behind, takes a world title, brings, a, brings home a world record as well. And there, take note, you know, she takes a four kilo jump and then that three kilo jump for the win. Smacks that clean, good technical movement. And then right here, it's, okay, so right here, this is where her belt sort of rolls forward just a little bit. That leaves a bar forward a little bit on the recovery. So she's slightly soft, but again, she's done that throughout her career. She did it a little bit in 2017. She also did it when she hit that, uh, what was it, 135, and that's consistent at that top end. And so as a coach, you can sit there and say, this is the best weightlifter technically, I believe, of all time. So understanding what those small, minute errors are and constantly trying to iron them out or at least take them to that next weight, you know, maybe that next error would be at 145 instead of 140. That's when she's gonna continue to win these world titles. That's why she's the best because they have been doing this. They know exactly what they need to do to make these lifts consistent over and over and over again. How can I apply this to my own training? And I think that's where all the lifters, elite down to the novice, you can sit there and say, what does Quo do? She's focused during her warmups. Her warmups, every single movement has a purpose. Every single movement not only has a purpose, but it has a precise way to be executed and she does that every single time. She's also visualizing and she's imprinting her nervous system with these reps over and over and over again. And then finally, what else does she do? She knows in each and every position what her body needs to do from the floor to the knee, around the knee, from the top of the knee to the hip, from the hip to the catch. She knows exactly what has to happen in each position. So then when she's warming up, she feels those precise pr positions that need to be hit. She imprints it. And then when she gets to that top end weight, she hits those PRs and she brings home the world title. So make sure that you're consistent. You know the purpose behind every single exercise and you repeat it thousands and thousands and thousands of time over five to 10 years. Do this thousands of times over five to 10 years. And that is how you become the most technical weightlifter of all time. If you want more information about Olympic weightlifting, you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can check out our site around Olympic weightlifting and sports performance. If you want more videos about Quo, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.